Welcome to The Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Hi, I'm Dr. Russell Knudsen. And I'm Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash. Welcome to The Hair Loss Show. Right, okay, welcome. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for subscribing. Um, in so today's episode, we want to talk about finasteride. We've talked about finasteride in, in many of the episodes before, but one of the questions that uh, we both keep getting asked during consultations is, uh, you know what, I'm not so keen on uh, starting a finasteride dot because, you know, if I stop it, then I'm just going to lose more hair. All right, and and probably the same is true. The same question gets asked uh, from minoxidil as yes. well. Is that I'm not. I don't want to. Uh, but you have to take it for the rest of your life. Yeah, don't yes. You? Or if I, and if I stop it, I'm just going to lose more hair. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that comes from the concept of if I take the medication and if I stop uh, the and if I take it for a period of time, that will stop it in its tracks and then it will never get any worse. I think that's the where there's an error in conceptual right. understanding. Really. The way I like to explain baldness is that we should put it in the same category as high blood pressure or diabetes or arthritis. We don't cure these conditions, we manage them. Mm. And uh, an analogy also used with the patients is, you know, they say, well, I, you know, remember, a lot of the patients who come in aren't used to taking anything, right? Yes. They just, they, they don't have medication in their life. So this is a big ask for them. I say, well, but you clean your teeth at least once a day, don't you, to keep your teeth and gums healthy. So hair loss medication can be seen in the same light, that if you're taking hair medication, you're trying to keep your hair healthy. So to go back to the question of what happens when you stop. So there are people who will take it, but for any number of reasons, stop. Um, one of the reasons is side effects. A lot of it comes pressure from partners or families not to do it long term mm -hmm. because they're worried mm -hmm. about um, you know, the long term consequences of it. And I want to reassure people uh, that we do have like 25 years experience with this uh, medicine now. It's not exactly a brand new medicine, so we've got long term yes. follow up, uh, which gives us a lot of uh, comfort. But uh, there is, you know, warnings now about the effect upon and not just the sexual side effects, but warnings about um, depressive uh, episodes. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think this is true, but I, the, 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 these things occur because we see it very, very occasionally. But I think that, that, that there are people that are susceptible to it and there are people that are not. Yes. Um, but the short answer is, if you stop finasteride, you're gonna lose hair and you're gonna lose it within six months. In the original trial, uh, which they, uh, did for a year to start with. If you got a result and you were improved and you stopped it, you deteriorated within six months. It has a long duration of effect in the skin. So the half-life of the skin is a month. So I tell patients, you can take a month off, you can take two months off. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to get your partner pregnant, you, yes. can, you can take a break from it, you're not gonna do any harm. But if you're off for six months or you're off for 12 months, you're gonna lose hair and it may not come back even if you go back on the medicine because we need to remind uh, uh, you that as the hairs deteriorate, there's a window of opportunity as they start to deteriorate in length and width and color where you can turn them around. But once they get to 50% or less of their original quality, game over. So when we started with finasteride um, back in the late 1990s, I kind of hoped that if we had people on it for five years or 10 years, and then they, for whatever reason, decided to stop, that they would maintain that five or 10 year benefit. In other words, they would be five or 10 years less bald than they were, but yes, the balding would start again, but they'd maintain the benefit. That does not turn out to be true. And that has consequences because what happens is, patients, in my experience, use it for five or 10 years, they stop it for whatever reason. Within six months, they go, well, hang on, not only have I lost hair, but I'm worse than when I started. So did finasteride or minoxidil yeah, harm me? And the answer is no. You now look like you would have if you'd never been on treatment in the first place. There is no long-term benefit. You can't stop it and maintain the benefit. So I think well, we, could, we could probably uh, you know, sort of try and graph that out. And if we do time and, and you know, the amount of hair that you have on your head, let's say you, know, you have this much sort of hair and then you, at this point you're starting your, um, uh, well, at this, uh, you start to lose your hair. Then over time, what will happen is that you'll gradually lose your hair and, and you'll reach a base, uh, baseline point there. 
Now, in the same individual, if you were to uh, start your finasteride at that point, well, you probably maintain it. You know, there'll be a small leak. We know that over time, you're still going to lose it for some. For some, yeah. You, but you'll you'll still sort of in that in that ballpark. But then, if you over here decide to stop your finasteride, well, what's going to happen is you're probably going to you know over time drift down to to that baseline. You're never going to go lower than what you were genetically uh -huh. primed to to end up at, but you just well, delay what's going to happen. It, well, the, one way to show it even more accurately is if you stop here. Right, and this is where you were while you're on it. Six months later, you're going to be here. Yeah, right. Yes. As, as if you'd never had it in the first place. That's what's going to happen. Uh, and then you will drift as you would have normally. But, you know, it's worse than when you started. And it'll be a lot worse than when you started. It's not the drug that did that to you. Yes, it's nature. It's nature. Yes, the genetics of the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, so I think the, the important point, the take home is that it has to be a long-term, you know, for some people it's a long-term decision, but the goal of it is maintaining your hair as much as possible. It is not a cure for baldness. Plus, remember also, there are patients that, that I call premature balding. They're the people that tell me if they're 40, uh, and that it wouldn't uh, matter to them, but now they're 25, it does. So I'm going, well, let's just hang on to your hair until you're 40. Yes. But when you stop, expect it to go away pretty quickly. But if you're cool, if you're happy about that, then there's no, no harm done. Yeah. Cool. So this is, that's also true for minoxidil. Yes. It's not just a finasteride story. Yes, unfortunately, we don't have a cure. Um, we don't even have the genetics fully worked out of it, meaning we have some candidate genes that we understand are involved. But before we start to think about gene therapy, we'd have to be pretty sure that any gene that we switched off didn't yes. have another Do it, function else, yeah. that, we, that we don't yet know about. So um, you know, cures for baldness are, are nonsense um, at this point in time. We just don't have the, ev the, uh, the analysis and the evidence of the genetic influences. Uh, to know um, how to do that. Yeah, essentially we're, what I always say is that we're, we're trying to hold the wolf at, at yeah, the door for as long as possible. Yeah. Uh, and we do that with, with everything that we've got in the armory and that is, you know, things like finasteride, minoxidil, laser, PR, right. you know, and anything, combination. And because patients um, commonly confuse the difference between shedding and hair loss, anything that influences the shedding rate is going to be a positive psychological effect for them. So using finasteride in a lot of patients decreases their shedding rate. Uh, because the hairs are healthier, they grow longer. Um, and the same with minoxidil. Right? Uh, yes, there can be a small uh, increase in shedding at the start, but then a lot of patients will notice decreased shedding, and that has a positive effect. It's not the shedding that's the problem, it's the regrowing that's yes. the problem. But nonetheless, it is calming and reassuring to them if they see less hair shedding out, because it appears that they've slowed things down. Good. All right. Well, I think that uh, hopefully addresses that point. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. Keep liking, keep subscribing. Thanks for watching.